Good morning, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat, coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It's Thursday. Packers are on the practice field later this afternoon. We'll hear from Matt LaFleur and a few other players and assistant coaches late in the day. But right now, as always, it's time to mix it up, chop it up with you fine folks in the chat on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. You guys come here every day. It really means a lot. Thanks so much. So many people are already chopping it up. Randy, you got the comment of the day so far. We are at week 10 already. Where has the season gone? Seriously. I can't, didn't it just start? Didn't we just get out of training camp? Week 10? It goes, I got to cherish it, man. I got to cherish it. Zeke, what's up? Thanks so much. I'm doing well. Hope you're well, man. Can I get a happy birthday? Shout out. Happy birthday, Josh. You share a birthday with Andy Herman. True story. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Hope someone's treating you well. <laughs> Matthew, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Um, I love in Seahawk territory. I live, I assume, Kathleen, in Seahawk territory and desperately want Packers to beat them. That is, oh, when you are a transplant and the Packers are playing the team in your area, oh, baby. When I used to live in Chicago, those were the greatest weeks when they won, which they did a lot. But, man. Yes, or when they would come here to New York and play the Jets or the Giants or down in Carolina when Corey and I lived there. Man, I feel you. I feel you. You want that W. Justin, thanks for the Super Chat. It's my birthday. Can I get a Go Pack Go? And also maybe OBJ. We got birthdays all over the place, Justin. Happy birthday. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, a Go Pack Go. Of course a Go Pack Go. Also maybe OBJ. I'll see what I can do on OBJ. I can't promise anything. I, I will pull all the strings I can, <coughs> which aren't very many. Uh, Jared, thanks for the Super Chat. Go Pack Go. Shout out to all my fellow vets and Packers fans. Nags, you're the best. Love the content. Jared, thank you so much. Yes, I, I always feel weird saying happy Veterans Day, but salute to all the veterans out there, both past and present, um, for all their sacrifice and everything they do for our country. Clearly a very, very, very special day. Um, Jared, thanks for the Super Chat. Very much appreciated. Moises, thanks for the super chat. Nags, hope all is well. Is Kenny's injury serious? Also, do you think OBJ could thrive in Green Bay? And what was the reason for his lack of production in Cleveland? I mean, he would tell you it was Baker Mayfield. <clears throat> uh, I do think you know the lot, a lot goes into it. For me, it was always weird that they never really seemed to treat him like a true star flanker and drew things up for specifically you know, him in the offense. They you know, are progression-based offense. But you've seen how the Packers feed Devontae. I always kind of found it mystifying that they didn't do that with OBJ. But, you know, they they had a great year last year. Obviously, they're doing something right, and they seem to be getting back on track now. But I think the the main friction there is with Baker Mayfield. Um, is Kenny's injury serious? Not a long-term concern, according to LaFleur. He was out on the practice field yesterday in a limited capacity, or who would have been. The injury report is a guesstimation or an estimation because it was only a walkthrough. But Kenny was out there, which is good. And yes, Matt LaFleur indicated on Monday that Kenny's injury is not a uh, long-term thing, but they will undoubtedly take it slow. Good. I would, I would think there's a pretty decent chance that he doesn't play on Sunday, but we're still early in the week as far as, you know, trying to make determinations. We'll get more clarity this afternoon and then ultimately tomorrow, but uh, no long-term concerns. Chris, thanks for the super chat. Media question: Do sources inside team buildings provide different levels of information depending on the outlet, i.e., national versus local? It's an interesting question, Chris. Um, it's all about relationships. It's not really about um, national <coughs> national versus uh, local as far as um, targeting information. If you're a agent, a lot of the times it's about you know just wanting the widest audience possible as quick as possible, and that's why mega reporters like Schefter or Jay Glazer or what have you, they've cultivated relationships throughout their career and guys just go to them because they'll know, you know, they'll get as many eyeballs on the story as possible, as quick as possible. When it comes to team stuff, you know, it, again, it is totally relationship driven. Um, you know, they'll be, I'm not going to put two and two together for you, but you'll notice that on the beat, there are certain types of stories that get broken by the same person or people every single time. Uh, that's because there's a relationship there, you know, uh, whether it's a medical thing, 
um, Packers, I guess, Lambo related. Um, you know, the, these types of stories get kind of broken by the same reporter or reporters because they have a relationship with whoever is feeding them the, the information. But, um, you know, it, it is not, it is nowhere near as uh, open as it used to be. I mean, back in the day, reporters had beers with coaches, you know, and, and personnel people all the time, and they would hang out. Now, people are much more guarded uh, inside 1265 Lombardi and across the NFL. That's not a Packers-specific thing, but um, it used to be very, very different. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, though, Chris. Quinn, thanks for the Super Chat. Nags, heading to see my first Packers game at Lambeau. Excited for my first spotted cow and Kroll's butter burger at your recommendation. Hoping we whoop the Seahawks. Go Pack Go. Quinn, have the best time. Uh, get to Kroll's on Saturday if you can. Sundays is always crazy. Um, doesn't make, you know, the butter burger will still be great. And the spotted cow will still taste delicious. It's just on Saturday, you can really kind of enjoy it. On Sunday, Kroll's on game day is nuts. And they change, like you can't sit at the bar. You can't, they have <coughs> all sorts of like, not restrictions, but limitations on their service, etc. Like if you want the full Kroll's experience, go on Saturday. But regardless, have a great time at the game, man. Uh, Pack Dat, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for all you, for all you. Definitely my favorite Packer personality. Uh, that's faint praise. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thank you. Not to think ahead, but if we sign OBJ, Lazard may be a good fit to fill Tunyon's role. I don't think it'd be like they transfer him to tight end or anything like that. But he's already been doing a lot of the same stuff that Tunyon was doing. As far as you know, we all know about his blocking. They've been bringing him in, say, in motion, in line to take on defensive ends or outside backers. So I don't think a whole lot changes, actually. I think he's already been doing what Tunyon was doing. But maybe there are specific concepts, things where, yeah, they route, route combination-wise or get him isolated on a linebacker or safety, kind of like we saw against Washington with Tunyon. Something along those lines, maybe we see a little bit more of that. But that will only ever be complementary um, to – what they're doing with Devontae, Aaron Jones, OBJ, if they sign him. Like, I don't think he would ever be much like we saw with Tunyon early in the year. I don't think he's ever going to be a focal point of the offense. But, you know, there, there will definitely be a continuation of kind of the nitty-gritty, so to speak. Bakhtiari Beer Chugs, thanks for the Super Chat. Nagler, don't know if you heard, but a certain someone was activated yesterday. Also, shout out Kevin King, man. Great game against Kansas City. <coughs> Bakhtiari was indeed activated. Fantastic news for the Packers. Is in the mix at practice. We'll see if he plays Sunday. Not a given, not a foregone conclusion that he'll be in the lineup against the Seahawks. But yes, he is back officially on the roster. That is great news. Got to love having 69 back in the mix. As for Kevin King, you are spot on. He played very well. Um, not something that's going to get talked about a lot. Of course, the dropped interception is what I think a lot of fans glom on to because they hate it. They have to hate it. They've hated it the whole time, so they got to keep hating but yes, Kevin was uh, was very, very good. And here's the thing. He's played pretty well across the board since coming back from that shoulder injury against the Bengals. So hopefully he keeps it up. And Lord knows, who knows how long Stokes will be out if he'll play this weekend with that knee injury. Um, they're going to need him to keep that level of play up. But I'm with you, man. He played a really, really good, really good game. Deshaun Perry, thanks for the Super Chat, man. How will the 12 era be remembered as compared to four? Oh, man, I think a lot of people obviously will remember the Super Bowl. And if they can win another one, that will cement kind of his status as, you know, probably obviously the preeminent all time great modern quarterback. I don't think he'll ever surpass Bart Starr in that regard for all time. But um, it is interesting if he never, if they don't win another championship with him. How will we be remembered? A, a lot of almosts and what could have been's, you know? And I think most knowledgeable fans understand that that is, for the most part, not of his making. Like, the numbers are there for everyone to see who cares to look at them as far as the number of times the defense let them down, the number of times he put them in position to win games in the playoffs or in the NFC Championship games. You know, was he perfect? Nope, of course not. But. More often than not, he had them in a position to win or gave them a fighting chance, and the defense would let them down time and time again. So 
Uh, how will it be remembered? I think, you know, that chapter is still to be written, but uh, he is, I don't think there's any question that he's surpassed Favre as the greatest modern quarterback in Packers history. It's just a question of how many rings he ends up with. Accidental Hero, thanks for the super chat. OBJ feels like John Jefferson to me. Am I just being Eeyore? 100 Acre Wood Fun. <laughs> what a reference. Wow. Um, yes, you're being Eeyore. No, he's not John Jefferson. Not even close. Especially considering what they gave up to get John Jefferson. That's why it's such a great move. You know, as like they, <laughs> vet minimum? Bring him in? It's, it's Jalen Smith, only he can probably help you. And if he doesn't, or something happens, he gets out of line or doesn't produce or whines or whatever, you cut him. And it costs you nothing. But the upside is unbelievable. As opposed to John Jefferson, who cost an arm and a leg and did very little. Cobb returning punts this week? God, I hope so, Kevin. I doubt it, though. Any info on Z? He made a appearance at practice yesterday. Off to the side, just kind of walking around. But he's around, as is Jair. Getting closer. Getting closer. Ed Pierce, thanks for the super chat. <coughs> I'm with you on Euro and World Cup. Is there any truth to the rumor that Rogers signed an endorsement deal with Reynolds Rap? He will be fine. <coughs> I have no idea about his endorsement deals. I really don't pay attention to most of that. Uh, but yes, Euro and World Cup all the way. Mm. Uh, Chris Dorsey, thanks for the super chat. Brass tax is OBJ Packer this week. Thoughts? No, of course not. No. And I'll be pleasantly surprised if he is. But do you really think the Packers are going to sign this guy? Come on. Fool me once. Shame on. Won't get fooled again. You know the quote. Pack that. Thanks again. If we see Matt ride the hot hand at running back moving forward, Nagler statue is needed in Lamp. <laughs> oh, uh, that's, that's lovely. And thanks. I didn't, I couldn't remember the handle that asked the question yesterday in the chat that I ended up asking Matt about touching base with the analytics folks in game. Um, you know, his answer was pretty much what I expected it to be, but that was a great question. Um, and I thought it was funny. I saw people saying like, Matt didn't like the question or whatever. I thought Matt was fine. I, you know, he, he had fun with it. It was good. Hi, Aaron. Can you bring Leroy Butler on the show sometime? Ryan, we've had Leroy on a number of times. Uh, he was on Packer Transplants late in the year last season. Um, you can find it on the YouTube page. Just go to the Packer Transplants playlist. But yes, we'll we'll always have Leroy on again. Um, if for no other reason, then I just love talking to Leroy. He's awesome. And got to gotta get him on so we can pub up his, his soon-to-be enshrinement in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Because if it doesn't happen this year... We got to burn Canton to the ground. Come on. We all know this. I spy the beginnings of a new streak stash. No, no, no. No, 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 Carrington. Uh, we, we, we're, we're growing a little scruff here. I don't know. We'll see. It's so fucking warm in New York, though, this week. It's kind of annoying. I want it to get cold so I can grow my beard. Got to get ready. It's November. Going to be December soon. Got to get that playoff beard ready, baby. That's all it, all it is. Travis Smith, you old so-and-so. I love you, brother. How are you? Any truth to the rumor you were the second best NFL Dreamcast player in college? I love you so much. I whooped your ass, son. Number one, second best. Kid, I'll throw down right now on some Dreamcast. Let's go. I love you, man. So good to hear from you. I hope you're well. Travis was in my class at North Carolina School of the Arts. He is very good friends with Corey Benke as well. Travis is the man. Travis and I would literally be in rehearsal, in rehearsal, like on set, like on stage. And there would be a break and the director would be talking to someone. We'd be across the stage from each other and we'd just look and we'd give each other one of these. We'd go. Because we knew as soon as rehearsal was over, we'd be hightailing back to his place to play Dreamcast NFL 2K. Travis, I love you, man. I hope you're well. Get up to New York, dude. I haven't seen you in forever. Justin, I saw a Micah Hyde jersey in Kansas City. I miss his punt return. So do the Packers. All time, uh, tied all time for most punt returns for a touchdown with Desmond Howard. Uh, Nags, who is out since Bakhtiari is in? I think they had a spot, so I don't think there was a corresponding move. It's a good question, though. I didn't, I didn't really look to see because I think they were at 52. I could be wrong, though. 
What to expect from the Seahawks this weekend? Good question, Stephen. I would suspect, especially with Chris Carson back. Now, that's the thing. A lot, obviously, being made about Russell Wilson returning quarterback for good reason. But Carson's coming back as well. He was designated off IR, designated to return off IR. He's practicing this week. you got to expect they are going to try to pound the football. Um, and then, of course, you've got DK Metcalf. You've got, you know, uh, a, a bevy of ways that this team can kill you. But I think they're going to try and run the football. They're they're kind of getting back to Pete Carroll style ball. And, man, I think they're going to try and control the clock. They're going to try to keep Aaron Rodgers on the sideline. Uh, I think it's going to be, I would suspect, a, a somewhat ugly game. I also know that the weather is not supposed to be great. So far, the forecast looks in Green Bay. Like, uh, I think there's going to be some rain, sleet action at Lambeau on Sunday afternoon. So I would get ready for a, an ugly affair. And I think the, the Seahawks want to turn it into a street fight. That's just my guess. And Fairbanks, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. Finally caught a live chat. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us live right here. Bring back all pro role Preston. Wow, what a what a blast from the past. Joe, what has been the biggest difference in defense this year? Pretty remarkable seeing this is mostly same personnel and coaches. Joe, we talked about this on Packer Transplants last night, which I highly encourage everyone to check out. Um, yeah, it's a real testament to Joe Barry. Obviously, the scheme is different. And as you state, pretty much all the same defensive coaching personnel. Um, you know, Campbell has been a big addition. There's no question about it. But, man, you got to give Joe Barry props here from scheme and uh, discipline within it from all his players to technique having improved as far as tackling is worlds better than it's ever been in Green Bay. Joe Barry has made a difference, man. There's no other way to put it. It's It's been truly impressive. Uh, nice show on Steve Zabin. Thanks, Dakoba. Thank you so much. Um, I'm with Steve every Thursday night, uh, tonight, every Thursday morning. Um, I, I, it's a weekly appearance. So if you guys have your iHeart radio app, you can uh, tune in to 97.3 The Game every Thursday at, I believe it's 8.15 Wisconsin time, I want to say. Chris, thanks for the super chat. It's very warm here for November. Anyway, regarding the offensive line with DB back, we're taking Newman off the line, I'm assuming. But what about once Myers is back? Who off the starting line then? Hold on real quick. Let me... Uh, let me just call Adam Stenovich. Steno, yeah, hey, who's going off the line? What, me? Piss off? Oh, okay. I don't know, dude. We'll find out. I would suspect um, with Bakhtiari back, we'll put Jenkins at left guard and, uh, you know, probably keep Newman at right guard and Runyon you know, will go to the bench. That is my guess. I don't want that to happen. I hope it doesn't happen, but that's my guess. We'll see. And then Lucas Patrick obviously will be at center. And then when Myers comes back, I think Patrick goes to the bench and Newman stays. They love Newman. And he's coming off a really poor game. But he's had missteps and miscues and brain farts and all sorts of problems all throughout the year, and they've stuck with him. They clearly like – and that's the thing. There is great stretches of play. From Newman. The tape shows like really good stuff, but there's also a lot of very apparent mental mistakes. And clearly they want to keep with him and let him grow and let him develop. And who am I to say? You know, these guys seemingly know what they're doing. Riley, thanks for the super chat. Who has been the best number two wide receiver in the Rodgers era? Probably James Jones, most productive. And he came back and led the league with touchdown receptions. Not a bad job. <clears throat> I mean, would you consider Donald Driver a number two? He was never really a legit number one, but he's all-time reception leader, all-time receiving leader in Green Bay Packer history. He was pretty good. But, you know, the ones were who? Like, we got Jennings, Nelson, Devontae. So outside of those being the number ones, I guess you could count anybody as a number two, right? Um, driver or Jones, probably, I would suspect. <laughs> Brandy, Joe Barry has done all right. Brandy never changed. Your hatred for defensive coordinators is 
so endearing. I love it so much. Matthew, thanks for the super chat. Aaron, first trip to Lambo this weekend with great seats, stadium tour, and a stop at Kroll's. Any other must do, see, or, <coughs> or eat. Thanks. Uh, yeah, get to Nikki's in De Pere. It's an old school bar. It reminds me of the place my grandpa used to run in Chilton. It is the quintessential Wisconsin experience. Um, outside of that, you know, title town, hit up Anduzzi's or Stadium View to see all the craziness and get to lot one before the game, man. They know how to party there. That's what you got to do. Uh, Donald Driver was a beast, but Jennings definitely was Roger's favorite at one point. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Well, Jennings was a number one. Again, Javon Walker. Javon Walker didn't play with Aaron Rodgers, dude. Come on now. How do I join the Patreon? Bradley, go to patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. All we ask is $5 a month. And it supports everything we do here at the website, uh, the brand in general. Everything is uh, supported. Kind of Patreon members are our lifeblood. We really love um, you know, the, the interaction we have with them. The weekly happy hour is one of the highlights of our week. It's always a good time. And of course, as we uh, talked about on Transplants last night, we have the first ever Cheesehead TV Patreon meetup. Uh, the Saturday evening before the Bears game in December at Lambeau Field. We'll be in a box, drinking, talking, having a good time, mixing it up. Basically having our happy hour in person for the first time ever. It's going to be a lot of fun. Shout out to Charlene, Patreon member over there in the Philippines for setting that up. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys can make it out. Um, all right, I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you guys enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor on YouTube. Hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then tell your friends and tell your family, Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. Uh -huh.